Good morning, guys, um, or good evening. This is the introduction to Black Desert Academy, and this video, I'm going these um this series of videos may take a while, but it will hopefully by the end of the day give you the information you guys need to be damn near experts on knowing how to handle the Black Desert Academy. These videos isn't like the other YouTubers who are just gonna show off a few things or give um, a weird guide that only thing that you can get from it is how to copy them this is also this is um, a guide that will show you guys how to make money not making not selling one thing but how to read the economy and how to evolve and change your money making methods I'm going to hand you guys that knowledge and that's the most important thing that I want to accomplish in this series but the introduction we're not going to get too deep into that this is the introduction of Black Desert Academy, a life skillers guide, and part one we're going to talk about contribution, workers, and farming. And this is kind of what you're going to be doing in the first one to two months of the game. So this, these guides and this video will not leave you lost and confused as to what to do. I want this video, to, after watching and listening to this video, to give you exactly an idea in your head on what you need to do and what points you need to reach if you want to create a, a node empire and a life skill empire which semi passive to complete passive income that's what this, I want these videos to leave you with this very first video like I'm going to address it as if you are a new player okay so I know there are you in all stages and all levels of the game probably queuing in but I let me I uh, let me mind you that there may be some pertinent information Okay, so let's start with getting started in the game. Most guides will tell you about the basics of getting nodes and workers and what few first nodes to get. That isn't what I'm going to tell you how to start the game. I want you guys to first make all your characters on your account the very first thing you do when starting Black Desert. I want you guys to start building up energy passively and you will not build up energy passively on other characters unless they are created. So create all your characters immediately just to knock it out the way. I don't know how many slots you have, but whatever slots you do have, just create all your characters. You may delete them later, but I highly recommend you to do that if you're trying to make the most profit because alts are very important. Okay, once you create your character, the tutorial will begin with the little black spirit bubble guy leading you through. I want you to complete all the black spirit, um, black spirit quests is all the way up to level 25 to about level 30 give or take this will give you enough basic information and they'll give you access to the, the storyline points of um, Velia and Heidel to initiate certain quests to unlock heating skilled and heating professional which I will talk about in a different video so once you let's once you level 20 to level 30 um, I want you guys to work on getting at least 10 points 10 to 20 points of contribution once you have 10 to 20 points of contribution I want you guys to go and I want you guys to go to the marketplace by the fountain in the city of Heidel you will see a bald man with a beard this guy will offer you a strong fence now what I want you to do with the strong fence to start your game off and allow you to progress as fast as possible in the life skill department is to farm for the first month or two pretty decently or heavily or focus so your emphasis on farming is needed to produce the fastest results in the beginning of the game so I want you guys to rent a strong fence okay guys and plant it somewhere that is close enough to your storage or where you do your main operations and choose one and choose one of these five seeds okay one seed is special corn seed, special potato seed, special wheat seed, special barley seed. Um, what else I'm thinking? Special sweet potato seed, and I believe that's it. So one of these seeds you choose. The reason why I gave you five options is because all these seeds are interchangeable in the recipe for beer. So in the grain slot, 
you can use either um, either of these grains to fill the slots. And if you're if they have the blue tier color, which is special, that's what they call special. They will be blue. And the meaning of a blue crop means that in the recipe where it will take five white normal crops, you can replace it with one blue. And once your skill reaches like artisan plus, that one blue is worth seven or more whites. So please keep that in mind. This will also allow you to AFK longer and mass produce things without having to worry as much about weight because you can, you can you carry a fifth of the amount you would need to if you used normal white crops. Now farming is a lot faster way to accumulate these crops than w your worker system ever will be. And I want you guys to not listen to any more of these stupid freaking guides like I did that tells you to get contribution and invested in potato farms or whatever when you're starting off. That's completely ludicrous. The first thing you want to do is farm. We're here to get you contribution as fast as possible, progress as fast as possible. Okay? So set up a farm, 10 slots. Choose one of those grains. Don't mix them up, just choose one so you don't waste more space. Now, once you set up this farm, you, I want you guys to keep buying the seeds. And once you have an, a wagon, a merchant wagon costs about 1 mil to 1.5 or whatever, around that price. And I want you the guys to put a wagon in your stable slot in Heidel. Label it seeds or whatever, whatever you need to label it to remind you. Buy the next batch of seeds within the time frame, if, if possible, within the time frame before the first batch is har ready for harvest. So you can replace them right away. So after the 10 slots is done, you just replace them with the same seeds. Now, if you cannot get the chance to buy the seeds when you need to, you're going to have to resort to something called plant breeding. Now, with farming, you have the option of plant breeding once the crop reaches over 100%. Once the crop reaches over 100%, you can either um, breed the plant, which means that you will harvest it for seeds. And when you harvest it for seeds, you get one to three seeds from that one crop. So you have the options to double or triple or break even on the mother crops you just made. But <clears throat> what you what I would do personally is that I would keep if I don't have any seeds bought and I'm just trying to restock as well, like replant, I keep plant breeding until I have enough seeds to replant them all and whatever I have extra I harvest so I stay you know even completely and this and this will also save me time on the on um on wasting um spaces and slots but your main goal is to buy them I repeat your main goal is to buy them buy as much seeds as possible so you don't have to resort to plant breeding this will speed up the process significantly another another tip for farming is that once your crop is over 100%, try to get to them as fast as possible. If they're 100 to 199%, it's fine. But once it hits that 200%, the yield in, 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 the, in the yield, the harvest you will get is extremely lower than it would if it was under 200%. So what I do, if my crop reaches 200%, I give up harvesting them and I just take them for seeds because I feel the seed RNG isn't as harshly affected as the harvesting RNG once your crop is reached 200% and it's considered an old crop. Moving forward, so once you started planting your grains, I want you to keep doing this. Maybe as long, I want you to keep doing this and keep expanding your farms. Every time you get another 10 contribution points, buy another strong fence and plant 80 slots of nothing but potatoes or whatever you try, decide to use as your beer grain. And once you reach this point, you're mass producing beer, you should be mass producing the special crops on a level that you cannot keep up with, I hope. And if you can't keep up with, you should be grinding instead of cooking because hitting level 50 is also very important to stack up on scrolls. But once you reach this point, I hope that you start to stockpile enough to have at least, I wanna say 20, 20,000 blue crops or 15,000 blue crops ahead of what you're already making. I want you guys to start opening your worker system, okay? So we talked about farming 
I introduced you guys to how it works and how you will start it off for the first month or two. Now let's talk about the workers. And this is when you actually do what those plebes say and, you know, start investing in nodes a little bit. Now let's explain workers. I'm going to give you a brief overview. Okay. And if, and if you can't put two and two together from workers, from what I'm about to tell you, and you have like completely lost after this video, then I don't know what kind of gamer you are. But anyway, workers. Workers in Black Desert is the most passive thing you can probably do to make money. Workers are used to gather materials that you don't have to do yourself. There are some materials you have to get yourself or buy. And these materials I'm going to call bottlenecks for the rest of the Academy series. And I will go into bottlenecks at a later date. Now, workers can be sent to gather lumber or dried fish. Um, they can be sent to excavate. They can be sent to workshops. And they can also be sent to... I feel like I'm missing one thing. Uh, I cover workshops. <laughs> Well, if I'm missing another thing, please add it in the comments. But th these are what workers are generally sent to do. So besides lumbering, um, besides lumbering and ore, excavation points are just going to be what really make or break you in the in the um, in the node system. So let's get started. So to acquire workers, you need to purchase lodgings, and to purchase lodgings, you need contribution points. To get contribution points, you'll be spamming bear and doing the trade ins like I mentioned in the farming portion of the video. You will get the trade-ins and trade it into an NPC who will exchange those cooking trade-ins for contribution points. Now, this is what this is the method you're gonna you should have been doing and repeating until you reach hundred to hundred and twenty contribution points. And whatever a little bit over a hundred contribution points you have right now, you start slowly adding notes to your system. Now after you buy some lodgings, you have to go to the work supervisor in the town that you want the worker to be living in. You want the worker to be at the node, I mean, at the town closest to the node you want to send them to. This will increase the amount you get per hour because the, the trips from back and forth will be will greatly reduce the time spent for your workers to get the resource in the timer. Okay, so the work supervisor has two options for acquiring workers. He has... Um, contract workers and worker exchange now if you're new to this game most likely you'll be contracting the workers to contract the workers you have to spend five energy and they will randomly generate a, a worker for you to um, purchase for a small amount of silver and if you do not like the worker you can spend another five energy to switch it to another worker that might be more fitting for the node you're trying to get him to work on I know at this point your energy probably is really low, so don't be picky at the beginning. The most important thing right now is to get a worker in general, and you can replace them as needed as time goes on. So let's get you some workers and covering the node, okay? So the other option is worker exchange to those of you who are magically rich already. You can buy workers from... Well, don't buy any green workers, just let me just say that right now, but from like skill to like artisan... You could buy workers, and even if you're at a, a city that isn't where that isn't where the worker is from, the workers should tell you what city that the sellers make I'm um, selling them from. So let's say you're in Heidel at the worker exchange, and you see a Velia worker. This does not mean if you buy him in Heidel, he will be a worker in Heidel. If you buy him in if you buy him in Heidel and he's a Velia worker. You have to resource, um, use the lodgings in Velia for that worker, and he will be a Velia worker. So where the per where the person is selling them is where that worker will be, not where you buy him at. You buying the worker at the worker exchange is completely irrelevant to where the worker will be once you buy him. Only the city that the seller is selling the worker will t will be where the worker will remain. There is no moving your workers around. All right, moving forward. <clears throat> You've hired your workers now, guys. You have your lodgings, and you want to and you want to understand how to um, keep your system going. Now, this is why I will have you guys craft beer so far in the beginning. 
you should have a crap ton of beer at this point, okay? I do recommend you sell the blue bears for money and keep the brown bears. So, you have a crap ton of bears and you have a few workers so far. Now, what do you do? So, workers are fed beer to keep them going. This is what is used to restore their stamina. Sending workers to a node reduces their stamina every time they bring back resources. And this also increases their level, thus increasing their work speed and productions. Every, I want to say a few levels, I don't know the exact number, I think it's five, increments of five. But every few levels, a worker learns a skill. And each skill has a, has a specific bonus to whatever task or node-specific task that they do. And, and um, these skills can also greatly increase your productions or the amount of energy they spend. The skills are very far, about, very far from the results of your workers working on a node. So the same workers with two different skills and one worker can literally triple its production because he has a nice set of skills on them. So keep that in mind. But it's very in-depth and I do not want to go too deep into worker skills right now. You guys are just starting the game, so this is not important. Every 10 levels, your workers will be available to promote. The tin foil hat theory is that if you you should wait until they reach at least level 20 for better RNG for them to pass the promotion test. Trying to promote them at level 10 right away, people said, tend to waver on the unlucky side and fail almost every time they try to promote at level 10. So the tin foil hat theory is level 20 and above before you try to promote them. But the available promotion starts at level 10. It takes 24 hours for a worker to do a promotion test, and with that promotion test, they have a chance of failing. And so this is not the fastest way to love, um, to promote your workers, but it is good to make sure you have at least a worker, or well, once you have more workers, it's good to have at least one person taking the test every day just for that chance. But the primary way to get better workers is to just keep exchanging them for better ones when people don't need their workers anymore. But that, right now, like I said, isn't that important. Right now, you guys are beginners and noobs. So hopefully, um, I'm talking as if you guys are. Hopefully, you guys are just worried about filling up your nodes with workers. The first node I want you guys to get and focus on is the iron ore node and the copper ore node at Coastal Cave right off the shore of Velia. I am recording this audio first, so hopefully I am showing you guys where that node is. Um, once you get these nodes, I would advise you to put a human on these nodes. You, you are not taking these nodes for the ore or the copper, but you are taking these nodes for the um, special procs. Now why do I say humans? The reason why you want to take a humans on these ore nodes is specifically because humans workers have the highest luck. Every worker is specialized in a different department, and humans specialize in special procs, which is luck based. Humans is in between our sp in between in speed and got um but good on luck and stamina. So you will want if you can, don't use all your energy trying to get humans, but if you can, try to get two human workers to the coastal cave first. The next thing you want to work on is the entire farm area of Velia. So all the chicken farms, potato farms surrounding Velia you want to send workers to. The chicken farm is also a human based farm because you need RNG to be on your side as much as possible. Chicken is a not I mean chicken is not a valuable asset and is not used in many valuable recipes. Therefore, what you really are using the chicken farm for is the eggs. The eggs is a major bottleneck in the economy. Whoops. The eggs are a major bottleneck in the economy, but it is needed in the most valuable dishes in the cooking profession. So sending a human there with good luck is also will help you get the most eggs out of those trips as possible, at least in my theory. And, um... Sending and sending them to them from Velia will also cost you, obviously, more contribution points to connect them. And if you don't know how to connect a node, 
you have to visit that node specifically unless you have a value pack and talk to the node manager and you have to have that node either directly connected to a previous node or connected directly to a, a town which doesn't require a node to be activated for a city to be connected so one or the other so to connect a node you talk to the node manager and click on his, his UI and go to node management or node investment and once you do you'll see on the left top left corner of the screen to invest contribution and that little widget in the corner of the screen it will show you how much contribution points you have as well as energy so please keep that in mind when you're investing your nodes not all nodes cost the same amount of contribution points some nodes cost one and some nodes cost as many as five or six contribution points depending how far in game you get so please use your contribution points as wisely as possible so at this point you should have at least 80 to 100 contribution points steadily invested in nothing but crops for beer and this is good because this will speed you up fast and the other 20 plus or whatever contribution points we're at right now should be used to start your little worker system so hopefully with those 20 to 30 contribution points you have after 100 you have enough to open up your lodgings in Velia and connect all your farms surrounding Velia. Okay? Now, once you reach the 150 to 160 contribution range, I want you guys to look at these nodes next. The next nodes I want you guys to look at is called Lynch Farm Ruins node. This node will be used to get a very valuable product called Trace of Savagery. And as well as the the next node, right, I forgot, right, I'll show you guys. It's called Alejandro Farm. It's a little bit north of Lynch Farm Ruins, heading back towards Heidel. This, I want you guys to send a giant there. I know it sounds weird, but I the giant carries a lot more honey wine than any other character I've had. And I've seen his skills. I don't see why it's, it's doing that. But I, I, I recommend a giant or, or artisan human on the honey wine. Um, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, so you want to gather honey wine and traces of savagery from Lynch Farm Ruins. To activate Lynch Farm Ruins, it's not as simple as just clicking on the node and investing the, or meeting the node manager and investing the contribution. I do believe that almost all excavation nodes require you to go there in person and and talk to the node manager using energy to get the knowledge to activate the node okay so you got your cooking honey and you got your nodes of um, lynch farm ruin set up as well as the farming's areas of Velia set up as well as the two ore nodes set up okay so this should be passively making as you keep spamming beer to your blue in the face <laughs> for contribution points. <clears throat> so now you're at the one, we're still at the 150, 160 mark. I want you guys to look over to the Calpheon part of the map. Now, once you reach Calpheon, look for uh, a farm called Northwest Wheat, um, North, I, I can't remember, Northern Wheat Plantation, I think is something along those lines. Once you go there, activate the wheat and barley nodes because these are also products of beer. And why am I asking you to get nodes on top of the farms you have right now? Because eventually you're gonna take down those farms once you reach a certain threshold of contribution. Okay, so once you have those nodes activated, send giants to work on those farms because there are no RNG procs at those farms I recommend giants because if, if you guys are a big time AFKers you're better off using giants because they'll get more work done and, and by the time you get home instead of just sitting down doing nothing waiting for you to feed them again so I recommend giants for farms once this is set up then you should be on a good track of building up resources passively for beer and also if you have at least 70 to 80 to even 100 slots dedicated to like special potatoes or beer, special crops for beer, you should not be able to keep up <laughs> with that amount. 
okay so hopefully that's stockpiling to the special crops that's so fast you can't consume them now with all the beer and the cooking honey as well as the traces of savagery stockpiling up from the lynch farm ruins now I, I think I should talk to you about mass producing utensils now to mass produce utensils I strongly strongly if you're a beginner I strongly recommend if you're AFK for a few hours to just buy the 500 durability utensils I believe they're called the Balanos utensils and with those utensils you use that for only AFK cooking like literally I'm going to be gone for three to four 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 hours guaranteed use those utensils while you're using those utensils I want you to go and mine rough stones now there are several spots to mine rough stones um, there are I'll probably go over to the nodes area where you will go and do it and maybe if I have time I'll show it show it in the video where I go to mine rough stones if not in Sendar's channel has a video of, of mass farming rough stones as reference and I'm probably link it in the description but you mine rough stones from little rock nodes some look more obvious but the more rough stones I mean the more stones you mine the more you kind of get an eye for what's most likely to be a mineable rock because <clears throat> they tend to have a certain look to them and a certain size so mining rough stones is going to be your biggest bottleneck um, you should be making some silver passively either through fishing when you're AFK when you when you're AFK or you know have enough utensils you should fish or you can make the money through selling the blue beers in the silver trade-ins from all the cooking you do okay um, but once you have a semi decent amount of silver just from trade-ins or doing whatever little things you do while getting your contribution points up I want you guys I want you guys to focus on getting a plus one cooking costume at least plus two if possible what I recommend to get a plus two cooking costume is about 20 fail stacks and it will take you about maybe two or three tries if you're if you have normal luck and you should get a plus two costume a plus three costume recommend about 35 fill stacks and it should take you about one to two I mean if you have normal luck two or three tries I guess or if you get lucky in your first try so there we go so that's how you get a plus three plus four costume I don't recommend you go for unless you have a shit ton of money made and you're like not even near the beginning phrase anymore moving forward so you invest in your costume I want you also to get a plus one or plus two alchemy costume as well and a plus one or plus two gathering costume if possible look join a life skiller guild or a guild that gives you gathering and fishing speed bonuses this is kind of things you would do on the side so we went over utensils I'm recapping so we went over utensils farming and getting a beer empire set up this is the first empire you'll probably have until you reach about 200 contribution points so once you reach this amount of contribution points you will move towards lessening your farms and expanding your node empire now this is the point where you reach this is the point we reached when you decide whether you want to focus more on cooking still or start developing your alchemy trades um, cooking and alchemy is, is so in depth in my opinion to explain for a new player that I'm going to separate it to the video since this is more an introduction video I'm going to talk about basic things to get a new player started on their life skill empire so if you don't have enough sometimes you won't always have utensils even I don't even I run out of utensils sometimes and this is where fishing comes in now if you're a fish and if you fish the AFK fishing is fairly easy the biggest struggle is inventory slots um, there is a video telling you how to get almost every inventory slot in the game and I will also put that in the description and I'll make, make my own personal inventory slot video when I have the time and you even if you don't have a lot of inventory slots it shouldn't be too bad but fishing AFK is a great way to make money um, but the way you make money through fishing isn't what people think or isn't what other guides might tell you you should only sell the blue and orange fish fish to do it if, you, if you're trying to build the same empire that I am the any fish that's below blue and orange I want you to dry turn it into dried fish and store it in a wagon labeled dried fish 
And this is something I'm going to tell you specifically to do because there is no ifs, ands, or buts on this one. It's just a bad idea not to do this. Dry the fish and label it in a dried fish cart. As well as find choose a city to store all your relics you get in while you do this in the background. So while you build your big contribution, you should also be fishing on the side. So find a good place to store your relics. I do not recommend a wagon because wagons don't have nearly enough space to them for the amount of relics you're going to be making. And and once you dry your fish, keep keep stack stockpiling them. And honestly, from the beginning, from once you start like doing this farming thing, when you don't have time to farm, you don't even want to AFK, and you don't have time to like AFK cook something. Fishing is always your best option. If you have a little bit of pocket money, I do inv I do suggest investing in inventory slots, or have a character specifically dedicated to fishing. Because honestly, in my opinion, inventory slots isn't a problem for much people unless they're a fisherman. Like I don't need inventory slots and bought on any of the other characters besides my fisherman, because each fish take up a slot. So please keep that in mind. Um, so once you have all those fish dried up in your wagon by the time you reach 200 plus contribution and you're ch is changing the shape of your empire your slow, your slow growing contribution and node empire you should have a decent amount of dried fish stockpiled up and <clears throat> with that being said you should be introduced to your first major or your first lucrative imperial trade setup which is going to be fried fish the recipe requires two dried fish um, three deep frying oil and about two flour. If not, you can always check the recipe on um, on um, BDO on um, BlackDesertFoundry.com. I choose Black Desert Foundry above other sites for specifically recipes because of the format seems easy to understand. But some recipes are wrong, which I might make corrections when I have more time. Um, so yeah, dried fish times two, flour times three. Deep frying, um, deep frying oil times two, and um, the flour can be made as a byproduct of weed, uh, of wheats, not wheat, uh, wheats, potatoes, or um, any of the grains used in beer. And um, I know I've been doing a lot of talking, but I want this video to actually have some meat to it and not just bullshit around with superficial stuff. So <clears throat> bear with me, guys. I don't know if I can make this video more interesting, but. Just bear with me, but I promise you at the end of this academy in this video series, you pretty much not have not many questions unless you just skipped parts of the video. And then I'm going to refer you to these videos since I worked so hard on making these. So, what I'm going to say is that um, you should have enough dried fish to make a certain amount of packages per day. Now, you have to be aware of your... Of your um, your um, income and expense whenever you're doing these, these imperial trade packages. You do not want to bring out all of your supply in one day. You want to make multiple packages a day because you probably won't be able to keep up with the amount of trade packages you produce by simply fishing. But you should have stockpiled enough to be able to do a decent amount daily and slowly fish back whatever you spend. So dried fish, I mean fried fish packages is your first imperial trade package. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about imperial trade now since we're going into this category. You have your beer, once again, you have your beer system in the background. You have your farm. We're not going to talk about downsizing the farm just yet. But you have, so you have a lot of beer background going, a lot of trade-ins, a lot of contribution going through. And you have like your lynch farm and your cooking honey, recapping again. So right now, and you also have a lot of fish from fishing whenever you had AFK time. Like complete sleeping AFK time is preferred for fishing. Anyway, so you should have a lot of um, dried fish. The next thing you should have is uh, use your contribution points to go to Ovia and start a great farm node. Now, the reason why I say that now in this point in the game because it's kind of optional. Because you can actually just buy the grapes directly from a fruit vendor in Calpheon instead of having a node for it but the price is a little bit more expensive but I prefer passively doing it so what I would do it doesn't cost much it doesn't cost you a lodging is I'll have a worker in Ovia preferably a giant or or maybe a really or if you can get an artisan goblin goblins are good for farming if they're artisan but 
preferably a giant doing the grapes in Ovia. The reason why it doesn't cost contribution is the reason why it doesn't cost contribution is simply because that every every city gives you one slot to hire one worker without buying a lodging. So this isn't this isn't simple information, but I feel like a lot of videos don't add this. So you can buy you can get one free worker at every city without even getting a lodging. And there's only one imp very important node in Ovia, which is the grape node. So unlock the grape node when you get the chance and passively build that fruit. All right, we established the Ovia and the fried fish system and how we're setting it up. And be sure to stockpile your fried fish once again to um, make sure you don't, um, be sure to stockpile your fish to make sure you don't oversell what you're actually bringing in fishing wise okay and now you have your fruit and the ovia going around in the background now here now is a good time to show you the next phase all right now is a good time to show you the next phase okay well this is actually within the same phase but you're at 220 contribution and I, I want you to start working on some more nodes you're reducing your farms and using this contribution to expand your node empire now, here's a few nodes that I want you to work towards. Okay, so the first nodes, um, the first nodes I want you to work towards when you expand your contribution is the Silver Azalea nodes. Um, you can also buy Silver Azalea, but I strongly recommend you using the nodes to get it because you save yourself some money. So there's a Silver Azalea node at the Lynch Farm Ruins. You can send anyone there, but I suggest a work up uh, a human or a giant to go do that and you can also expand that to the northern plain of Serendia and also start lumbering maple for, for the lumber and sap and silver azalea so those two silver azalea nodes I want you to get next I want you guys to connect um, Heidel to um, actually scratch that next I want you guys to get the one south of us the one south of us is Costa Farm. Costa Farm. This one will give us wheat and flax and and um, Moretti Plantation. This will also bring us in wheat, another beer byproduct. And at this point, if you have enough room for lodgings and workers, you really don't need to have a beer related farm anymore. Next, I want you guys to move down to Eastern Gateway, all the way to um, Southern Guard Camp. And connect it to Glish Ruins. Glish Ruins is an excavation node. It requires energy to activate. Once you activate Glish Ruins, you um you'll be excavated for something called Black Dirt. But the byproduct of that excavation is called Trace of Origin. Now, Trace of Origin is something you want to stockpile. <clears throat> it's something you want to stockpile, whether or not you're using it for any time soon. Trace of Origin is something that is used to make offhands for Musas and Maywas. And if you use the AP, if you um, make the AP offhands, you can always sell it into the market once the market demands it. So stockpiling this is very important and very helpful. As well, you get trash trade-ins you could turn in for silver. So this will be your second node you activate. And then next, <clears throat> next I want you guys to activate is the Castle Ruins, and this will give you maple tim more maple timber and sap as well. You want to stockpile on these materials as much as possible when beginning your empire. So you're at 220 contribution. I do want you to continue working hard to expand that. I know you'd be hitting around a little bit of a soft cap, so the contribution game will get significantly slower in the 200s. But keep working at it, but you no longer have to devote your entire farming life towards it. Your farms now be devoted to cooking and alchemy, but I won't really go into what you should be making in this video because I want to talk more about the economics. Um, but yeah, actually, I'm going to just end this phase. So this should pretty much be the end of the 220 phase. So at this point, you have a little bit of Imperial trade going on. You're still spamming bear, hopefully you're reaching the nice 220, 200 to 220 contribution mark. You've been playing for about a month and a half or two months, depending on how consistent you are. And this is when things start getting good. So... I use the 220 contribution point mark, then I'm gonna be like, okay, you should have a crap ton of like whatever the blue crop it is you've been having for the last month and a half. You should have a crap ton of that. A lot of the fruits that that a lot of the fruit byproduct that that crop produces, and 
as well as trade-ins from being a farmer. Farmer also gives you trade-ins for contribution points. And not many people talk about that, but it's not as fast as clicking, of course, but still con it's contribution points. And farming, con um, farming um, trade-ins also give you something that gives you gathering EXP. And if you do sometimes take time to actually prune your farm, which is what you do whenever they get attacked by bugs or crows, you can get a lot of weeds and, and possibly sharps and hearts. So now I'm going to go back a little bit into farming and how we're going to advance to the next stage of farming. If you have a large farm, I do advise you, and you have this much contribution points, I do advise you to open, open a lodging, enough lodgings in the city closest to the farm to send workers there to manually work on your farm. This will allow the crops to grow faster. This will also passively bring you weeds into the storage of that city and you will need weeds for alchemy later on. Okay, so you have, you have let's say you have 10 farms now, right? You have 200 to 220 contribution. I won't recommend you downsizing your farm until you hit like 230 or 240, or you just have a crap ton of beer to spam. But you have about 220 to 240 contribution. You're hitting that beautiful mark. Once you hit 250, then things a lot of things are gonna change. Um, you have a bunch of workers keeping your farm up to tip top shape and you have a, you have a build up of passive weeds these weeds will be used to start to um, kick start your alchemy career but before I move into that I'm going to talk about the change in crops okay so once you can downsize your farm by about I want to say 30 to 40 slots once you hit like 220 contribution but also change the crops. At this point, you should have enough of the original beer-related blue crops to keep spamming beer for a long time. And by the time you even run out of those blue crops, you can swap them. I mean, your workers' passive beer network will be able to keep up with the mother crops you need to keep your beer going for a very long time. So at this point, you're looking at, okay, I have 40, 40 more contribution points because I closed four fences of my farm. I'm down to like maybe 50 slots or maybe um, 40 slots, I don't know, depending on how you feel, of, of farming fences. What I'm going to do now, at this point, you decide on how you want to build up your um, empire first. You can keep cooking, which a lot of people prefer, or you can turn it over to alchemy. Now, this part, leaning towards cooking and alchemy, is kind of where I'm going to start drawing the conclusion of the introduction because... I'm not ending it right now, but this is we're going towards in, um, the conclusion, guys. So, when deciding what to do with your farms and what to sell using cooking and alchemy, it's not simple as copying some YouTuber or that what he did to make money or what he sold. What this academy is here to teach you guys is how to understand the market. You should not always if you sell one thing. For more than three to four months, that's it's either you got a really secret thing that's going on <laughs> that no one else is competing with you in, or you're just copying someone and you're not seeing the same results as someone else. And if you are copying someone and not seeing the same results, here's why: because Black Desert is a semi. It's probably one of the more complex economic marketplaces on an MMO. You have to understand the supply and demand statistics of the marketplace. Imperial trades, let's just ignore imperial trades for now. Now, let's talk about the marketplace and alchemy and cooking's um, role in the marketplace. Now, to decide what crops or what ingredients to make, you first need to decide what do you currently want to make that the marketplace is in high demand of. Like, for example, as I make this video, Serendia specials are like completely like oversaturated, so making those are retarded, is is stupid. Or... If you're an alchemist, right now, plywood hardeners is oversaturated, so making those would not be that smart. Same thing. So, what I'm trying to say is that we need to, um, I need to make sure you guys learn how to eye the market. So, to, to keep an eye on the market and to properly make decisions on what to cook and what to make isn't as simple as copying what I do, because what I do might get oversaturated by people who don't look deep enough into why I make them in the first place. So, here's how I decide how to make something and whether or not it's worth making. 
First thing I look at is the market supply and demand. Now, the market gives you a set number of information like how much has sold since the start of the game, when was something last registered, and how long is the product you're looking at been posted for before it's been sold. Now, this is enough information for you to understand whether or not you want to make something. Now, I probably will look in the video and give you an example. Now, if, if there's a, is there a product that is, mm, let's say 3,000 in stock right now, and you look and you click on that product and you see the product has posts from as old as four four days ago to not even post that's lasted more than any post that lasts more than two days you should not even bother making okay so if you see posts that's been posted for two days or more <clears throat> you already know that this product is not needed right now and I will not make money fast making it so let's say if you see experience potions and see a bunch of people who's posted experience potion that hasn't sold in over two days then don't make experience potions right now and especially if it's really overstocked but even but don't look by the amount of number that's in there look at the time that these posts last and if you see posts that's lasting if you see posts that's lasting more than two days then don't make it whether it's a hundred in stock or twenty thousand in stock do not make it now, what you do want to make is when is products from cooking and alchemy that has a short timer in the marketplace, meaning that this there could be a hundred thousand of these, but every single post has not lasted longer than twenty four hours. That means you can still sell that, dude, and you can still make money and still probably cash out within twenty four hours, because the, the the supply and demand is just that nice. That's how I decided what elixirs to make and not make, or sell or not sell. Another good thing to look at, besides ones that are actively being sold, is what's not actively being sold. You can scroll down to the bottom of your marketplace page and you'll see grayed out items. When you see those grayed out items, you can put your mouse over like the little icon that will tell you the last time it was registered. Now when you look at the last time it was registered, you have to keep in mind like, okay these items are grayed out. The last time it was registered was two hours ago, so meaning that there's not enough people making this because this minute it's put up it's sold almost instantly these are what i call market holes market holes means that there's not nearly enough suppliers but demand is completely out off balance mean that this is how you do cash outs like in the race to a billionaire that almost guarantees at the end of the day you can cash everything out and make millions because you know what the market holes are now the spot market hole this couple things you need, you need to know one, when's the last time it was registered? Two, um, oh yeah, two. How, uh, what are the supplies used to make it, and is it something I can spam? And three, is there a profit? So the last time it was registered, if it's, it has been registered recently and, and they're grayed out, that means they're selling quickly. Two, if the if the um, if the if the um, is the product? I mean, not the product. Is the um, material spammable? I'm sorry about that. If the materials are spammable, then that's something you definitely want to invest in making, cooking or alchemy-wise. And and three is the profit. So you want to make sure there's a nice, decent profit margin. You don't want to be, especially if you're not making all the products from scratch, you want to make sure if you're buying the materials that there's a decent profit margin. And depending on if you're a value pack user or not, will also the should also be put in your calculations because on average, you probably lose... I want to say like 40% to taxes if you're not a value pack user or 40 to 50%. I don't know. You, you, lose a lot to, you, lose, you lose a lot in taxes if you're not a value pack user. And um, I might even do a video telling you how to snipe value packs later. But if you're a value pack lose, um, user, you probably lose about like 20%-ish in taxes. So please keep that in mind. So this, these are things you want, that's going to be important when choosing what to make alchemy and cooking wise but whatever you do choose for alchemy or cooking you will need a farm no matter what so you want to keep at least even at my stage I keep 30 to 40 slots of farming in there just because alchemy and cooking needs farms farming is, is almost a universal is almost a universal um, life skill that connects almost all the life skills together so please keep that in mind um I don't want to go into details on what to make in the introduction video. At this point, you guys, after watching this video, I hope you guys know 
how to get the contribution points, okay? What to do at what stage, what nodes to get at the beginning, and how to slightly turn your empire at during key moments in your account when things start to change and alter, okay? And this video has been on, and I'm going to work my ass off putting this video out. Um, so please, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support what I do, subscribe. And if you appreciate the hard work I put in, maybe tell a friend of word of mouth. I don't care. You don't, you don't even have to share it. Just word of mouth. Say, hey, if you're new to the game, this helped me. That This will also help support what I do and allow me to make more videos in the future. So um, much love, guys. Uh, I'm going to put a lot of work into this series, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Give enough feedback. Any questions? And any questions that has been answered in the video is someone else asking in the comments. If someone else watched that part of the video, just answer it for me sometimes. I appreciate that. Um, anything that's not mentioned in the video that I said I would mention in a future video, now just tell them I'll mention in a future video because I mentioned that. Um, and if anything other than that, if you have specific account related questions to me, you can ask me during my Twitch streams. That's why I love doing like a QA part because I know everyone's at different levels. And or send me a message using the Micros TV Facebook page. If you haven't liked me on Facebook, liked our um, Facebook page yet, please do so. It will also help you guys get a little bit more updates on when I'm about to upload the video slightly ahead of time before it just uploads randomly. So, um, much love, guys. Um, this video has been super long, but I wanted to give you guys the meat and bones, not just blatant information with random stuff. I want you guys to be able to build an empire. So unlike me, it took nine months to make something of this level. I want you guys to be able to finish and be done with this within the three to four months. You're already making like at least over a billion dollars a month by month three or four. Or even sooner, depending on your play style. So much love, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. And um, it's been Micros TV. Peace. Thank you.